morning. How many of y'all are ready to have church tonight? I mean, I want to go ahead and welcome y'all to New Life Pentecostal, where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. I'm going to turn it over to Brother for announcements. Praise the Lord, y'all. We serve a good God, don't we? Amen, amen. Come on, we serve a good God, don't we? I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to give him some praise tonight. Amen. He's delivered us through another day, y'all, through another week. Amen. We've made it back to Wednesday night one more time. Amen. Going to start with uh, the announcements. Amen. You want to let's run the announcements? And I'm probably doing this backwards, but that's okay because Pastor's not here. Amen. The QR, the QR code. Y'all know what the QR code is? This is the coolest thing in the world right here, y'all. You put your phone right there, and you take a picture, and all the announcements for the whole month pop up. Try it sometime. Try it, just try it. It's cool. Amen. Then we have, all right, prayer meeting on Tuesday night. Uh, last night, oh, my wife, I, 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 was, I was working on a message for a funeral I did today, and last night, and my wife was in there with me, and usually she'll give me plenty of time, and, and she'll, she won't be near me and making noise, but all of a sudden I hear something going on. I was like, that sounds like pastor. And, and she was over there watching the, the prayer service last night, amen. So come to prayer meeting. If you can't come to prayer meeting, tune in, amen. Tune in if we got needs. The Word of God says we have not because we ask not, amen. And then, going on, we have youth prayer meeting the first Tuesday of every, of every month. That's, uh, that was May, uh, May the 2nd. That's like coming up, ain't it? That was yesterday. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm tired, y'all. Praise God. All right, moving on. Bring your Bible to church, y'all. Uh, and not your digital downloads, not your, uh, your iPads and your iPhones. Amen. Bring your physical Bible. It, it, it does make a difference, I promise you. Moving on. The Addiction Recovery Program, 7 p.m. every Thursday night. We, uh, we Revival's coming out of that, and I believe Revival's going to continue to grow through that. And it's because we got behind our pastor's vision for this program. Amen. I've been... Been at doing the jail for 17 years. Been involved with several uh, recovery programs or halfway houses, but never a recovery program per se. Until Pastor sat me down in his office and he said, "I've got a vision for this. Lead it up." And I looked at him and I dutifully said, "Yes, sir. Whatever you need, Amen. Get behind your pastor's vision. Everybody in this church needs to come and have at least one of these meetings with us, Amen." It does good for the soul. Praise God. All right, moving on. Moving forward in faith, the capital campaign. Uh, I don't know where we are money-wise, what's been raised so far, but I know we need more. Amen. We need more. Praise God. Honor your commitment. Praise God. What, what you've committed to, honor that. It's, it's being counted on. Vacation Bible School. Everybody say Vacation Bible School. That's where saints are made, y'all. Amen. That's where lifelong saints are made. Uh, I got two. Ch I got three children, and all three of them were in vacation Bible school. I believe they all three went to vacation Bible school a year at one point. Amen. And I got two of them still living for the Lord. Praise God. God's good. That's where saints are made. Boss butt sale. Uh, y'all like to eat, don't you? Praise God, I love to eat, amen. I love some Boston butt, praise God. Uh, get with Sister Kendra, I believe. Who's heading this up? Sister Bean, I'm sorry. We need to sell about 150 of them, Sister said. How many have we sold? I know we sold one to me. Amen. Uh, we need to sell more, praise God. Get with Sister Bean and, and tell her that we'll get you on the pre-order form there. Praise God. Amen. We're going to have revival the May 28th uh, and the 30th and the 31st. I've heard Brother McManus preach and uh, I've listened to some of his YouTube stuff. A uh, powerful man of God and I cannot wait to see what God's going to do when he comes and, uh, and ministers to us, him and his wife. 
Volunteers are needed. Amen. Everybody say, I can volunteer. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Come on now. I can volunteer one more time. Amen. Because the one, first time when y'all said that, it was only the ones that volunteer all the time said it. Amen. We need volunteers, y'all. It takes volunteers to make the church run. Praise God. And we uh, live on Facebook and we upload to YouTube. Uh, like and share these things, guys. The more our, the more the message gets out there, the more people are affected. And uh, social media is the, the way of the future, amen. It's the way that uh, I was really against the Facebook Live when we started doing it at Vincent, when Sister Harold come and she wanted to start it doing it at Vince and I was really against it at first and then I realized that we were reaching a hundred people instead of ten amen it, it worked praise God and the giveify uh, easy I've done this uh, downloaded the app and download if you, if you want to give that way we of course we still take the regular old envelopes and uh for your tithes and offering, it's a great way if you're into the digital stuff, that that's a great way to give. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight, guys. I, I want to take just a second, amen, and, and ask y'all to please remember my mother-in-law. This lady means more to me than any woman in my life short of my own mother. And my own mother passed away in 06. And she has been a mother to me since 2006. She was a mother to me before that. But uh, she was hospitalized this morning with pneumonia and uh, 82 years old. She just turned 82 Saturday. We need to lift her up, amen. Continue to remember my daddy and my niece and my nephew and my family. We buried my brother this morning, amen. And uh, one of the toughest messages I've ever preached, but uh, God showed up and showed out at a funeral, amen, because that's the kind of God we serve. Praise God. Anybody else got a prayer request tonight? Amen. Yes. Yes. And deliverance. Amen. Yes. Amen. Agree. Yes. Come on. Y'all... Ladies, let's come up, sisters. Praise God. Hey, do what, sister? Sister Laura, yes. Y'all remember our first lady, amen. She had a procedure today. Said it was going good, amen, and I'm assuming it did. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, let's just lift our hands all across the sanctuary tonight and just lift the Lord up today. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. God, we magnify your name, Lord. We ask that you meet us here tonight, Lord, and have your way in the service, God. Lord, hallelujah, Lord, we magnify your name, Jesus.
rise and speak. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. God, we give you the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to take up the night tithe and offering. Brother Kyle, if you get up with that.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands and worship God tonight. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you.
on, let's clap our hands tonight. Don't we serve a God who's good tonight? Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we magnify your name. At this time, the kids' church can be dismissed. I'd like to thank the singers and musicians tonight. Lord, we worship. Make sure we remember Pastor and his wife in prayer as she recovers from the procedure she had today. Just keep them uplifted uh, as we go through the week, and hopefully everybody's recovered and we see them back Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Love our pastor and his wife. I'd like to thank our pastor for allowing me the opportunity and entrusting me to uh, speak with y'all tonight. Um, as always, I, I won't hold you very long. Um, but tonight I want to talk about a house of prayer. And my text tonight comes from Isaiah 57, verse 7. If you could stand for the reading of the word tonight. And it says, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them, a joy, make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. For who? For all people. Not for me, not for you, but for all people. His house shall be called a house of prayer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, ye are not your own. You may be seated. So what I'd like to point out in those two scriptures there is the Lord's house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And then in Corinthians it talks about how our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So what that tells me is that each individual here tonight should have our own house of prayer. Amen. Psalms chapter, uh, yeah, Psalms uh, chapter 9, or 109 verses 4 says, For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. And Acts chapter 6 verses 4, it says, But we give ourselves continually to prayer, and to the ministry of the Word. Our prayer life should be based on a relationship with God, not just results from God. We are to be a house of prayer. If our prayer life is just based on the results that we get, our prayer life would not last long. If we get frustrated and upset with God because He doesn't answer something on the time that we think he should answer it. And we just quit talking to him and we quit praying for a couple of days. To me, that would be a very weak relationship. If me and my wife got into an argument and we just didn't talk for days, there wouldn't be much of a relationship between us. Have you ever had a friend or a family member even that you didn't help one time and they just quit talking to you? Often all through life we're going to go through, and I'm sure everybody here has had it happen, and I'm sure we'll have it happen again. You do everything you can for this individual, and then the one time you just aren't able to, or you're just, you've helped them out every day this week, and you're like, I need a, a day for myself, and, and you don't give them that last minute they wanted. They just, oh, you must hate me, you, you don't like me anymore. But I wonder how many times, we, if we really think about it, that we have done that ourselves to God. We just get frustrated with Him. We quit talking to Him. We don't pray. We just get frustrated. There must be something deeper in our prayer life. And then looking back at the Scriptures, it didn't say that prayer was something that they gave to God, that they offered God. It said they gave their self to prayer. So that says to me is them giving themselves to prayer 
that the prayer actually had authority over them. It wasn't just, I'm going to pray for two minutes. It was, no, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray until something happens. So if we just give God prayer and we're just talking to him, we also know that one person that they just talk to you and they don't really care to have your opinion back. They don't, they don't really care what you have to say. They're just telling you and they're talking to you and they're just going on and on and on. And you're like, every time you go to say something, well, yeah, but, well, yeah, but. And you just, you, they never, they don't value your input. And so you're sitting there going, why are you telling me all this? If you're not going to value what I have to say, why have we been standing here for 20 minutes, you talking, and I, you won't even listen to what I have to say. But we do that also to God. We pray, Lord, give me this. Lord, I want this. Lord, I don't have that. I want that. And then we're done. We come up to the altar and we pray for a minute or two. Lord, here's my need. And then turn around and walk out the door. And we don't sit and wait for what God may be trying to tell us. It's a whole different experience when you give yourself to prayer and don't just pray to check it off of your daily to-do list. In Genesis chapter 19, verses 27, it said, And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. We all need to build an altar in our home where we meet God daily. If we set a holy place in our home and prove it with our actions, and we show up day after day, even if we don't hear from God the first day, but we give God the time and he knows that we're sitting there waiting for him at this time every day. Eventually, he will speak to you. Exodus 2 and 5, it says, And he said, Draw not hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. What made the ground holy there? It was just a place where God met with Moses. And they continued to meet there. That's what made the place holy. Other than that spot to meet with God, that spot was just a piece of dirt. It could have been anywhere, but it was the place where Moses met with God. Just like this church. Without God, this church is just a building. This church is a house of prayer. And when it's recognized as a house of prayer and treated as a house of prayer, the Lord will fill this place with His Spirit. And the Lord will show up time and time again as long as we continue to show up and be expecting God to do something when we get here. Hallelujah. God will meet us here. And this will be our house of prayer. I believe God has a plan in motion for this church to play a bigger role in this city than it ever has before. Amen. Who believes that with me tonight? Hallelujah. I believe it's already in motion. I believe it's going to start happening before our eyes faster than we really believe it. I believe that this revival that we're about to enter is just a springboard for what is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that things are starting to shift and we won't just be that Pentecostal church in Columbiana, Alabama where people get excited and the music's lively and we get excited and we worship and shout and dance. But we will be that church that someone came to get food from the food pantry and they end up getting baptized right here on our platform. We won't just be the church that people call, oh, those crazy Pentecostal holy rollers we don't want to go there. It's a little too much for me. But we will be that church for someone's family member who comes through our recovery program and they turn their life completely around. We will be that church that someone drives by during our prayer meetings one night and they come in and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We will be that church that not just supports missionaries overseas, but we will bring up missionaries and we will send missionaries 
overseas. Who believes that with me tonight? We will be church that miracles take place and miracles happen. And we won't just be the church that's the Pentecostal church that people are afraid of. We will be the church where things are happening. And it's going to spread through the city. And people are going to be talking about it. And people are going to be bringing people. And we need to be ready. We need to already have a house of prayer. And none of that will be able to happen. We will stop it all from happening unless we are first a house of prayer tonight. That's the only way God's going to be able to do anything with us is if we first build an altar and we make ourselves ready. So I wonder tonight if I have anybody with me that will join us in these altars and just begin to give ourselves to prayer tonight. Let's pray for the revival that our church is about to enter. Let's pray and expect amazing and miracles and wonderful, miraculous things to happen in this house because I believe they are. And I believe they're going to happen for you and for your family and for your friends and for this city as a whole. Amen. Come on, let's stand and worship and raise our hands tonight. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you just make us a house of prayer tonight. Lord, we worship you, God. Let us be willing, God, to be able to do what you want us to do tonight, God. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. God, make us to, to be ready, Lord, for when you're ready to use us, Lord, that we're ready. And we have that altar built, Lord, that when you just ask us to move into this position and to go here and to do this, we don't have to go through all this stuff in our daily life and repent, but we've already made the altar, and we're ready when you're ready, God. Lord, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Lift your hands and worship God. Lord, make me a house of prayer, Jesus. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Lord, make me a house of prayer, God. Lord, not that I just have a prayer life when I'm in this building and in this church, Lord, but I have a prayer life with you at home, and I make a prayer, a house of prayer at my own home. Fire on my altar, never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Fire on my altar, never burn out. The fire on my altar, never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. My altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. The fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer, Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of house. 
all across this house. Let's just lift our hands for a moment. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in the sanctuary tonight, Lord. Lord, help us all establish a house of prayer in our own homes, God, to draw closer to you and to be ready for what you're trying to do through us, God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. And I'd like to ask you to pray and dismiss everyone tonight. Lord, we worship you, God. We thank you for what we felt in the service tonight, God. I ask you to help us apply it to our lives, God, and our daily routines to draw closer to you, God, to be ready for what you're trying to do in us and through this church, Lord. And be willing and available, Lord. And I ask that you just go with us as we go through our week, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember to be in prayer for our revival services and our pastor and his wife. Thank you. You may be dismissed.